Good day, everyone. This is Lou Weiss and Tim Grady from Manufacturing Talk Radio. Uh, today, we're going to be um, uh, experiencing something that uh, we haven't done yet uh, video-wise. Um, it is the New Jersey State of the State message about manufacturing in the state of New Jersey. Uh, it's being sponsored and run by New Jersey MEP, which is the New Jersey uh, manufacturing extension program, and uh, we're, there's a, Tim, there's a lot of people. We're going to run down this whole list, huh? Uh, the, the head guy, aside from Tim and I, is uh, John Kennedy, who's uh, CEO of New Jersey MEP, and uh, Tim, uh, I'll flip over the list to you because uh, I can't remember all those names. <laughs> it's an extensive list that the New Jersey MEP, which is the leading MEP, has brought together, including State Senate President Steve Sweeney, Senator Steve Orojo, Senator Linda Greenstein, Greenstein, uh, Tony Russo, who's president of Community and Industry Association of New Jersey, the New Jersey Department of Labor Commissioner Robert Asaro Angelo, uh, Melanie Willoughby, who is with the New Jersey Business Action Center, and other legislators who were involved in the New Jersey Manufacturing Caucus, which Lou also attended, uh, are all going to speak today with John Kennedy, CEO of the MEP, as they speak on the importance of collaborative efforts to create a pro-business atmosphere in New Jersey. Excellent. I would uh, take that even one step further, that this is a should be a model for all states to uh, present to the populace what's going on in manufacturing. Even though it's not a huge sector, it does represent some I don't know, 80 percent of our economy, uh, even though there's only 12 million uh, people in uh, manufacturing. So uh, that being said, uh, let's go to the events. Hi, this is John Kennedy from NJMEP, and I want to welcome you from my office here in Cedar Knolls, New Jersey, uh, to the fifth annual State of the State of New Jersey Manufacturing. Uh, last year, we had to truncate it, and we actually combined it with uh, Manufacturing Day, uh, but this year we're expanding upon it. Uh, we're doing three virtual events, more with a geographic bend. Uh, north, central, and south, and uh, we'll be having some some familiar names as as partners in this uh, CIA NJ, NJBIA, and this Chamber of South Jersey, which uh, is is a new partner for us, but uh, we're very excited about their involvement. The whole idea behind this event is it was based upon a simple premise. It was based upon communication. Communication between our industry, manufacturing, STEM, TLD, and our legislators and government people. New Jersey's a great state, and I love being here. I've been here my whole life. But we all know that it's a difficult place to do business at times. And nothing will change unless we get together and talk. And this is the whole basis to this event. The fact is, is that 2020 showed us again how incredibly critical manufacturing is to our lives, not just in New Jersey, but across the country. We also showed us that our supply chain is compromised and needs to be repaired on many levels. Uh, New Jersey has done a better job of this over the past few years, but the work is not done yet. From this program, you're gonna hear a lot of different things. You're gonna hear a lot of our industry friends talking and asking questions of legislators, of talking and asking questions of government people. And some of those answers will be things you wanna hear and some of them won't, but this is the way conversations and change get started. I do wanna leave you with uh, a couple of things as we kick off. Made in the USA. Wow, you know, we heard our president uh, speak of that. He even wrote an executive order which highlighted manufacturing and the MEP National Network. That's great. But what does it mean? 
You know, we need to find out more about that. We need to be prepared in New Jersey to take on this role so that we can actually bring in more work for New Jersey companies. Uh, federal dollars don't always come back to our state and we need to make sure that happens. Made in New Jersey, it's been discussed a lot over the last couple of years and, and kudos to Assemblyman uh, Hotaling, Assemblyman Zwicker and, uh, and Senators Orho and, and Greenstein who have led the way on some of this conversation. But again, how does it work? How does it support our companies and our people in New Jersey. The last one before we kick it off is Offshore Wind. What a tremendous program and, and hats off to uh, Governor Murphy, his team, and people like the EDA who have led the way on this. That's phenomenal and exciting. But how do we ensure that the work comes back to us as well? How do we ensure that NJ manufacturers, NJ trucking companies, NJ rigging companies, NJ engineers, NJ labor gets a fair share of this and we really create that new industry that we can help other states and expand? I don't know how that works yet, but we're gonna have to ask those questions. So thank you all for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And a couple of special shout outs of thanks you know, the governor and his team who have been very close to NJMEP over this past year, you know, talking to us every week about things, Business Action Center, the DOL, um, DOE has been working with us on apprenticeships and other things, and the EDA who has, has been constantly, you know, part of our conversations. Also, thank you to Senate President Sweeney and his creation of the Manufacturing Caucus. It's a bicameral, bipartisan group, and they have been so active. I'm sure they're tired of getting my texts at all hours of the day, but uh, that's led by Senator uh, Oroho and Senator Greenstein, and they, they just have been fabulous partners. So please enjoy the day, enjoy the program, and ask the questions. And if you don't get answered, Ask them again. We're here, NJMEP. Good morning to all my friends at New Jersey Manufacturing for the third annual New Jersey Manufacturing State of the State Address. John, it's a thrill to be part of this. It wasn't that long ago that you came to me and said we need a manufacturing caucus to really focus on the needs of the manufacturing industry in New Jersey. And when you first came to me and talked about manufacturing, I was like, manufacturing in New Jersey? Where is that? Only to find out how many thousands upon thousands of jobs are actually involved in manufacturing in New Jersey. It's a critical industry that we want to you know, continue to find ways to support. Uh, we've come a long way, educating people like myself really to understand what manufacturers go through and the fact that I didn't realize it was such a large presence when I started. I want to thank my colleagues Steve Orho and Linda Greenstein for leading this caucus because manufacturing is not Republican or Democrat. Manufacturing is all about jobs, all about making lives better, creating more opportunities. From working with you, John, and the manufacturers on stackable credits so we can get the certifications that are needed for, for the jobs that are available. That's critically important. You know, there's a lot of jobs that go unfilled because you just don't have the skilled workforce. That wouldn't have happened, stackable credits, if it wasn't for the conversations that we had with you and your related companies. Again, manufacturing is critically important to the state of New Jersey. We have a long way to go. We've done some legislation. Buy New Jersey. It's a great idea. You know, and we need to do more of that. Also, promoting legislation so we can create and ramp up more PPE production in the state of New Jersey so we're not reliant on foreign countries when a pandemic hits like it did. You know, we were scrambling and struggling when we had the manufacturing capacity here in New Jersey. And if we don't have it, we'd like to expand on it. You know, I'm looking for more manufacturing in New Jersey, not less. And that means we need to listen to the people that are actually heavily involved in manufacturing to ensure that their voices are heard so that we can craft legislation 
at the end of the day, makes it a little bit easier for you. You know, New Jersey, we know, is not an easy state. It's a very difficult state to do business in. So just the way we sit down and collaborate and have conversations so we can find better ways to, to advance and move forward. You know, I'm really excited to announce that EEW, a, a German monopole facility, is going to come in here and manufacture monopoles for offshore wind. That's exciting because the monopole facility is going to be housed in Paulsboro, New Jersey. We expect 500 direct jobs from that facility. And then there's all the other jobs that come with it. So again, John, I'm a big believer in manufacturing and thrilled to be a supporter and look forward to continuing to work with you and Steve and Linda and all the other members of the legislature to ensure that we have a very successful manufacturing caucus and that our manufacturing community continues to expand. Thank you. Have a great conference. I want to thank everyone who could participate in this year's virtual event and want to extend a special thank you to everyone from New Jersey MEP who worked to put, uh, put this year's summit together and made today possible. I first want to recognize all of the hardworking men and women who have faced this pandemic head on. You truly are essential workers. By simply going to work each day, you've assured that families across America can safely work, shop, study, and ultimately adjust to the world's new normal. As members of the New Jersey legislature, we will continue to fight for policies that support you. Manufacturing rose to the forefront of our collective consciousness in March and April, as many struggled to find an adequate supply of personal protective equipment, or PPE, to keep essential workers, students, and families safe. But although this one subset of manufacturing caught attention as truly critical work, we must also recognize that manufacturing as a whole has kept the world turning by keeping the supply chain intact. The last year has underscored the importance of having a strong manufacturing industry within New Jersey. In this past year, we've continued to work to invest in our manufacturing industry at home. We're working to ensure that we not only maintain our manufacturing sector, but expand its size, scope, and highly skilled workforce. We fought for and won a $1.5 million appropriation in the state budget for New Jersey MEP that the federal government will match. This ensures MEP will have $3 million to support New Jersey-based manufacturers, open a South Jersey office and training facility, scale up training, and expand apprenticeship programs. New Jersey manufacturers have committed their operations to produce PPE. I sponsored a bill that would streamline the production of PPE by New Jersey-based manufacturers and mandate that the government purchase a certain amount from these manufacturers. We're able to include this in the Economic Recovery Act of 2021 that became law to ensure that PPE produced by New Jersey-based manufacturers is given preference moving forward. By supporting our New, Jer New Jersey-based manufacturers, through the preferential purchasing of their goods, we're investing not only in them, but in the new workforce and the reinvigoration of our economy. We need to secure vaccines for manufacturers in the state. We know that the vaccine rollout has been slow. We'll continue to work with our partners in the Murphy and Biden administrations to ensure that manufacturers are grouped with other essential workers and are able to access vaccines as soon as possible. We have all faced one of the most challenging moments in recent history, but we have a lot to look forward to. President Biden signed an executive order to ensure that the federal government spend taxpayer dollars on goods made by Americans for Americans. This will create well-paid jobs and build our economy back better after the pandemic. New Jersey is moving forward to meet the state's offshore wind targets. I will fight for offshore wind projects that are made again for New Jersey by New Jersey. In the year to come, <clears throat> 
We will continue to fight for permanent funding for New Jersey MEP in our state budget. This is crucial to ensuring the economic well-being of all of our residents and the state overall. I introduced a bipartisan bill to create the Manufacturing Reboot Program within the New Jersey Economic Development Authority to help New Jersey-based manufacturers shift toward the production of PPE, COVID tests, and medications to treat COVID. We're dedicated to improving the manufacturing industry with a strong workforce. To improve training opportunities and to increase the number of skilled workers, we're working to create the Energy and Manufacturing Workforce Development Program. I also introduced legislation that will design a manufacturing career pathway to be offered through county colleges and county vocational school districts to provide with skills necessary to gain employment in the manufacturing sector. While the last year has been challenging, I'm hopeful for the promising expansion in our manufacturing industry. Again, I want to thank everyone for attending today, uh, and I look forward to working together to support our New Jersey-based manufacturers. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Tony Russo, President of the Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey. Created in 1927, we are a statewide business association representing the interests of more than 900 companies from virtually every business sector, including manufacturing. We are also proud of the fact that we produce a business to business magazine called Commerce, which is read by more than 40,000 business professionals statewide. I am joined today by my colleagues, Tracy Schaumburg and Wendy Tate. We are honored and proud to be partnering with the New Jersey Manufacturing Extension Program again on this special event. John Kennedy and his team of professionals continue to do an outstanding job representing and assisting such an important sector, and we appreciate the partnership. Today's meeting is important because it shines a spotlight on those men and women who produce so many of the products that enhance our quality of life and also the thousands of good paying jobs for so many of our residents. No one will dispute that the foundation of a good economy begins with a strong manufacturing base. It doesn't matter whether you produce medicines, chemicals, building materials, valves, or clothes. The important thing is that these items are produced here in New Jersey. And if you've been to Trenton, you know that there's a bridge that goes to Pennsylvania with a slogan, Trenton makes, the world takes. Our goal should be to change that slogan to New Jersey makes, the world takes. I also want to thank Governor Murphy, Senate President Sweeney, and Speaker Coughlin for their commitment to the manufacturing community. The Manufacturing Caucus, which was created a few years ago, gives a voice to our manufacturers on important matters, such as workforce development, tax relief, regulatory reform, and other matters. And we're fortunate to have great leaders chairing the caucus in Senators Linda Greenstein and Senator Steve Oraha. There's no question that New Jersey is a great place to work and live. We have an educated and diverse workforce, a robust higher education system, the second largest seaport in the country, an enhanced infrastructure and roads and bridges that continue to improve year to year, and the proximity to millions of consumers. We must remain vigilant and steadfast when it comes to keeping these jobs in New Jersey, and we must have vision and courage and attract the new ones. New Jersey thrives when the private sector thrives. The year was a good start to the year when the governor signed the, the New Jersey Economic Recovery Act, which is a tax incentive program for New Jersey businesses, but more needs to be done. We look forward to working with the governor, the legislature, and the business community in making sure our state continues to thrive and rebuild our economy. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Womack, NJMEP Marketing Manager, and I have the honor of moderating most of today's State of the State event. I'd like to thank Senator and Chair of Manufacturing Caucus, Linda Greenstein, CIA NJ President and CEO of Commerce Magazine, Anthony Russo, and of course, 
NJMEP's very own John W. Kennedy for kicking off today's event. We will now be moving on to the live conversation with Senate President Steve Sweeney and Senator Oroho, as well as you, the manufacturers that make New Jersey, our country, and the world continue to move forward. Before, I, I think that's where it all starts in terms of you know, improving and strengthening our economy. So um, without further delay, it's my pleasure to introduce the two senators that we're going to have for about the next half an hour, where we'll have a, a very informal conversation with the two senators. I know some of the members of MEP are going to ask some questions. So I'll start with the Senate president. Good morning, Senate president. Hey, Tony, how are you? I even wore a, I even wore a jacket because I knew where I would. But we, we, were I, just, we were just joking about that. Uh, we thought you would wear your suspenders, but I don't know if they're under your jacket. Or... Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so let me officially introduce Steve Sweeney, but he is the Senate president. Uh, he's been Senate president since 2010. Uh, congratulations, Senator. I know you're celebrating your 20th year uh, being elected to the Senate, uh, a former iron worker. He hails from the third district down in Gloucester and Salem counties. Uh, a friend to business. I know we have a great relationship with him. I know that uh, he was behind the, the start of the Manufacturing Caucus. Uh, so, Senate President, welcome today. Um, Thanks for having me, Tony. And, and then, and, you uh, know, it wasn't just me. It wasn't just me. Steve Orho was, uh, you know, we, we came as in a partnership on this one. Thank Gosh. you, Senate President. We did. <laughs> And it's my pleasure to introduce the, the second panelist, Senator Steve Oroho, who hails from the 24th district. And if you don't know where that is, that's at the opposite end of the state, all the way up in Sussex County. It's New York. It's New York. Yeah, it's New York or yeah. Pennsylvania. And uh, it borders Steve, both. <laughs> Steve, uh, Senator Oroho Senator has a financial background, worked in private sector. He's been in the Senate now 14 years, and he is the co chair of the Manufacturing Caucus. So, welcome, both of you. Uh, well, thank you, Tony. Great to be here. Yeah, what I thought I would do is just kind of set the stage, and I know some of the manufacturers have some questions, but obviously there's a lot going on. Uh, the governor gave his budget address on Tuesday, uh, and one of the bills, and I want to thank both of you, is sitting on the governor's desk right now, and that's the Government Efficiency and Regulatory Review Commission. Uh, for those of you that have been around long enough, uh, it's almost mimics what we did with the Red Tape Review Commission, and I think that's an important bill. Uh, also, the governor signed the New Jersey Economic Recovery Act. And again, thank you both senators uh, for pushing that through. Uh, it's a very comprehensive tax incentive uh, law now, at least 10 programs in that. Uh, I think the one that really pertains to the manufacturers is the Emerge program, where if you keep jobs and, and, and bring jobs into New Jersey, you can get tax credits. Um, but obviously there's a lot going on. And, and a few things that we want to want to talk about today is domestic supply chain. I think President Biden just yesterday announced that he wants to look at uh, bringing back the supply chain and what our capabilities are. We'll talk about offshore wind. We'll talk about always up front in, in a lot of the manufacturers mind is workforce development. Uh, and what do we do to bring uh, employees to the table and, and really attract and retain new ones? Um, and also a couple of bills that we'll talk about. Uh, and again, thanks to John and his team. Uh, really, the MEP program has done a good job. I mean, I've been tracking them for about 20 years now. And I think since John and the team come on board, it's def a different landscape altogether. Uh, so I want to give them credit. So without further delay, if I can have our first up. Oh, OK, I'll start with wind. I was going to have our first question, but so we actually did a, a wind event, uh, Senator Sweeney and, and Senator Oroho. Uh, I know that's a big deal. I know that the governor has the energy master plan out there. Uh, I know down in your district, Senator Sweeney, there's going to be a port, a wind port, uh, and a lot going on. But uh, do you want to talk about how, just in terms of wind and wind energy, what does that mean to New Jersey and manufacturers? You know, Tony, you know, back in 2010, uh, when we did legislation for offshore wind, it was more, on my mind, further from manufacturing and trying to capture the manufacturing jobs. I mean, look, the, you know, when we talk about this clean uh, energy economy, it's about manufacturing. So, you know, I'm thrilled after several year pursuit uh, that we were, able, uh, we were able to get a manufacturer a company called, a German manufacturing company called EEW, they're going to produce monopiles in the port of Paulsboro. 
We're going to create about 500 jobs. Down in Salem, we're going to build another port to assemble. But we're also looking at, at wind turbine manufacturers. And, and what happens, Tony, if we can to assemble the turbines, like to, to assemble the turbines in Salem, but then it comes with other manufacturing or the manufacturing of the parts. And normally when you when you get the, you know, the where they're going to assemble it, the parts people locate close to where you're going to assemble. So our goal is manufacturing and jobs. That has been the focus from when we first get offshore wind. Uh, look, I, I love the, the idea of offshore wind, but it, when we started it, it's always been about jobs. And Tony, not every state's going to land Every state is pursuing because they copied New Jersey's law, which says you got to have manufacturing. But we're right in the middle of the of the coast where all this wind's going, and it's the shortest distance to transport and everything else. So, long story short, we're looking for probably up to three or four thousand manufacturing jobs in offshore wind. And for me, a big thing it's in my district, uh, which is the poorest district in the state of New Jersey. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Senator Orho, Orho any thoughts on wind? Oh, yeah, and, and, and Tony, thank you very much. And listen, just uh, a couple of things real quick. I just want to uh, certainly appreciate the fact that the my other co-chair, uh, Senator Linda Greenstein, has been a terrific uh, partner. And, and just as you mentioned in your open remarks, the whole thing about bringing the focus of manufacturing, as the Senate president said, the wind is going to, you know, the, the, the wind generation and all the turbines and everything, um, are going to be very important for you know the manufacturing I, and i do think you know you mentioned john kennedy and his team have done a fantastic job of just making sure you know bringing the focus to how important it is um and just look, look we went through this whole we're going through the pandemic and everything that the manufacturing sector has done has been terrific and you know you talked about the you know the government efficiency and regulatory review commission i just got to hand it to the senate president because he may not remember, but it was the first bill that he and I put in for uh, what, be, what ended up becoming the red tape review, which will now hopefully become the uh, what's called the gear commission. Uh, but it was actually, I think, one of the first bills that Senate President and I uh, put in together. But just the whole idea of bringing this, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing, how important it is, we couldn't have had a, you know, a better demonstration of a year of how important it is than the past year we've been through. Oh, thank you, Senator. And just sticking with when one last thing, and, and Senator Sweeney, I know you're you're big on this. Is obviously to employ New Jersey residents in terms of assembling those parts and, and making sure that that investment comes into New Jersey. Is there anything we have to do? I mean, the energy master plan aside, you know, is there anything we have to do to assure that New Jersey workers and companies get a piece of this wind? Well, uh, Tony, first, I, I want to thank Steve Orho for being my partner with this and Linda Greenstein, honestly, because Linda takes this manufacturing post, you know, very serious. And, and Tony, listen, we had a war. When I say a war to ensure that manufacturing comes to the United States, this is a European industry right now. You know, this is Germany. It's, it's over in Europe. And they didn't want to come here. They did not want to come here. They would rather just manufacture. Look, they already have facilities set up. But supply chain is what we chase, and supply chain is what we want in this country. Just look at what's going on in the car industry right now. We can't get enough microchips. Now, I'm old enough to, what the hell is a microchip doing in a car? You know what I mean? But the fact that we're, we're so dependent on other places to produce things in our economy. So, look, I think that we were successful. Look, there was a big the big debate over there was a huge debate about the putting the the uh, wind towers up at the sea with the Americans. They had no intention of using Americans, Tony, because in Virginia, Dominion Energy just put two demonstration towers up and it was all Europeans. There was no Americans on the barge. So, you know, this is about making sure that Americans are trained. For me, most importantly, New Jerseyans, but overall picture since this is up and down the coast that Americans are out on those barges producing those jobs receiving the benefits since we're subsidizing this offshore wind so look it's been a battle but I think we've won it but I can tell you what I had to do I had to call every Senate president where offshore wind was going 
and to get them engaged because they weren't, no one was paying attention to who was going to assemble these, who was going to set these things out to see. There are hundreds of jobs, you know, so we want them all. It's, it's, it's that simple. We want as many jobs for Americans as New Jerseyans as possible. And this is an industry that was glad to come here and take our subsidies, but wasn't as anxious to take our, to put our people to work. Yeah, thank you, Senator. We are gonna go, if, uh, if she's on the line, Gail Friedberg, who's CEO of Zago Manufacturing, to ask a couple of questions. Uh, Gail, are you there? Hear me? Yep. Yes? Yes. Hi, Gail. Okay. Hi. Uh, sorry, I had a little bit of te technical difficulty. Um, but uh, yes, I do have a couple questions. The first question is, um, how can New Jersey monetize these issues that Tony mentioned for current New Jersey businesses and underskilled employees? Steve, I went last first last time. Go ahead. We're going to we'll go back and forth. Sure. Okay. Well, first of all, for um, one thing, I, I know that uh, the Senate President has has been pushing very much for is the whole thing with respect to the, uh, getting. We had passed a bill, and hopefully, it's in the governor's. Um, in, the, in the governor's budget as well for New Jersey Manufacturing Extension Program. Um, and the idea of, and John Kenny talks about it many, many times, uh, the, path, the pathways to prosperity and whatnot. And the Senate president talked about how, how you know, these uh, high-skilled, high high-paying jobs are. And the, I, I know with the uh, other co-chair, uh, uh, Senator Greenstein and I, we have sponsored uh, bills that, um, for you know, obviously the you know personal protection equipment stockpiles, um, looking at hopefully you know having say 50% of it manufactured here right in the state of New Jersey, but like two thirds of it make sure it's manufactured within the United States. So those are the kinds of things that that we're pushing, and it's something that went through very much very much on a on a very bipartisan basis. Um, I don't even think there was, you know, I think it's on second reading for concurrence in the assembly. I think it was voted unanimously by all. So these are the kind of things that we're focusing on. And I think it's because of the, the, the start of, the, of the, the partnership we've had with, you know, uh, business and manufacturing and all of us in, in the legislature. And I think the manufacturing caucus, when we first started it, I uh, know Senator Sweeney started it, um, it was something that I think has been able to put a much greater focus on how important it is. And as I said before, there's no better demonstration than this past year and everything that the manufacturing sector did. And and uh, to Steve's point, um, you know, when John Kennedy first came to us, I didn't realize, and I'm being honest, I didn't realize what a large presence, presence manufacturing was in New Jersey. Yeah. You know, because New Jersey is a tough state to do business in. We all know that. So uh, John really did a great job of getting us focused on manufacturing. And, and uh, you know, when we did the incentive bill, I had a separate bill for manufacturing of PPE. Um, and we merged it into the incentive bill. We shouldn't, we should, New Jersey should be the hub for the East Coast, the, the, at least all the Northeast, when it comes to PPE. You know, and we put we put credits in there to get more manufacturers and to producing PPE. Because remember, during the, the, the beginning of this pandemic, you couldn't get masks. My brother, my brother's a doctor and emergency room doctor. I had to get him. You know, when you see the construction guys with the canisters and the rubber masks, I, he had one of those with a construction uh, gr uh, gr uh, grinding uh, shield because we just didn't have. Enough enough PPE to protect people. Just because there's more now present, we should never be dependent on China or any other country to uh, protect us. We should be able to protect ourselves. This country. That's why we've done buy New Jersey legislation. That's why we're doing buy American legislation. Is what this pandemic showed is this country to be crippled by other countries. Look, China took care of their own. That's what you're supposed to do. Well, New, New Jersey and the United States needs to take care of their own and be prepared for any kind of pandemic. So in the incentive bill that we passed and the governor signed, there are credits in there to help manufacturers, you know, grow and create 
create more PPE in the state and hopefully for the entire Northeast. You know and, what, Senator? And then, and on the, I think oh, I'm sorry, Senator Orho. Go ahead. And then just 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 real quick, the one thing that um, that uh, John helped us realize right away was it's not all the necessarily the, the high profit margin things we got to be careful because. You know, when you, when you look at a machine will operate, you can't do a test because you don't have a cotton swab or you don't have a little plastic shield or something like that. So the issue of the whole supply chain of, um, you know, making sure that we can help control or that we can help uh, make sure that, that, you know, that stuff is readily available in, in New Jersey uh, and in the United States. Yeah, and the only thing I was going to mention, and, and Senate President, you and I have had this conversation, but we should be proud of the fact that we now have the second largest port in the country. I know South Jersey has a couple of ports, more to come. And so if we make these products, we could ship them out either by sea, by rail, by truck. So uh, I know infrastructure is a big deal. Right. But let's go to uh, Mark Howe, who is vice president of the Knotts Company in Berkeley Heights with the next question. Mark, are you there? Good morning. Hi, Mark. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the time. Good morning, Senators. Um, I'm frequently reading industry news about manufacturing companies opening or expanding in states other than New Jersey. Um, my question focuses on how can we change that trend and create an environment for more to call New Jersey hope. What additional steps can the Manufacturing Caucus take to drive advanced manufacturers to open or expand in New Jersey? Well, one is to listen to you guys. That's why we did the Manufacturing Caucus to know the hurdles that you have. As Steve and I are two people that, you know, I guess I'm going to my grave and championing reforms of government because I, I, I told the governor that I'm not stopping until we get reforms done to make New Jersey more affordable. That's one of the biggest problems is affordability. You know, it costs a lot to be here. You know, if we didn't have our location, if we didn't have our location, you know, and that's what they normally say, location, location, location. And uh, we'd be in big trouble. We're fortunate we're in the middle of everything. You know, we're in the middle of 60 million people. That's what, that's our edge. Our disadvantages were too expensive. And we got to continue to work. And look, yeah, we negotiated a new health care plan with the teachers union that saves over a billion dollars. You know, it's, it's things like that to bring costs down. We need a new pension system. We need we need to have, uh, we need to leverage our assets. Uh, there's there's just a lot of work in, in full regionalization. You know, there's plenty of ways to bring down costs. And then the, the regulatory process. That's why that bill that we did with with Steve that we were sending to the governor about this commission to review. We, we just got too much regulation. You know, like and and I I don't know how to explain it to you. We wind up putting regulation on top of regulation on top of regulation, and and what is it, Steve? Twenty five thousand, I think, pages. Yeah. Of, of of regulation that three quarters of it probably doesn't mean, you know, does is not necessary or not needed. So we got to we got to really focus on getting our house in order. And one other one other thing that we did, and I think we stackable credits. We've done this with the manufacturing caucus. Stackable credits is, I think, the way we should do education in the future, where you get the certification you need for the job that you want, where you have on ramps and off ramps. And like, I don't have to go four years to get a certification at, you know, at a university to get a certification, operate a piece of equipment. I might need, I might need certain skills. So coordinating with our, with our two years and our four years, our high schools, two years and four year schools, to make sure we have programs for manufacturers that we can customize so we get you the skill set that you need for the employees that you need in the future. By the way, and, Senator and President, just thought, I, I keep a copy of this on my desk. Yeah, well, when it, listen, Tony, I'm like, a, I'm like a dog. When I get on something, I, it ain't getting off. So for those of you I that didn't gonna, see it, it's two years ago the Senate President led an effort called Path to Progress. A lot of good stuff in there, and I know you're not going to give up. And uh, Tony, you know, the good news is, well. all, all, you know, to jump in, and not to jump in on Steve's time, we have a lot of school districts that are actually studying regionalization now. Yep. That you know, we were gaining real momentum in this pandemic hit, 
So, you know, we're not we're not going to back off of that momentum. I have a county sale. They're, the whole county is studying a countywide school system. Up where Steve is, he's got school districts that on their own are studying consolidation to put labs in classrooms that they can't afford right now. So, listen, we're making we're, we're making progress, but, you know, like anything else, the, easy, the hard stuff's always the hard stuff to get done. All the easy stuff's been done. So what we're focused on is the hard stuff. And every victory we get, like with the health, the, the health care reform with the teachers, that's another victory to put in the, you know, put in the bank. But Steve's like me, we're not giving up. But sorry, Steve. No, no, that's okay. Because you think about it, the, 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 you know, uh, Senator Solo and myself and Senator Sweeney and Senator Singleton. And, and um, I know Assemblywoman uh, Ilian Pintamarin was on that uh, path to progress. And Tony, I'm glad you bring that up because – that's we, we we just got to keep. Um, you know, I know the Senate President went all around the state. I was with him on a number of uh, the uh, uh, those uh, town hall meetings and whatnot. And and we're going to continue to push it. And obviously, uh, Senate uh, Bill S one was just passed recently for the Senate President been pushing the shared services. And I, and really to to the question. And obviously, we also have the. Uh, government efficiency thing that we're pushing. So these are all, you know, coordinated steps that making New Jersey hopefully a better place uh, to do business, manufacturing. But the other thing we got to work on too, and the Senate President mentioned, is that we we do have great assets. We're never going to be the low cost state, but we have to be a high value state. And we got, you know, the location, the workforce, the education, you know, systems that we have. We also have to get rid of the branding of New Jersey of being, we have to bring on a new brand for New Jersey that uh, we, we are a great place to, to come all the different assets we have. And quite frankly, we got to shed the, um, and we got to demonstrate that, that we're willing to do it. I think the path to progress, I think the regulatory review commission, I think S one, I think the idea that we're, we have a significant amount of money going to, New Jersey Manufacturing Extension Program. I think the fact that you have, you look at all these manufacturing bills that I have before me, and they are so many, so many uh, bipartisan legislators on there. So I, I think that um, the message has gotten across to us. Now we just got to keep making sure that we keep pushing the, um, and we we'll all keep, you know, well, let's just keep rowing in the same direction. And, uh, and I do think one of the things we have to look on now is, how do we rebrand? How do we rebrand New Jersey um, so that we take the value, so that we can, you know, demonstrate that value? Thank you, Senators. Uh, next question is from Amy Eskelson, who's president and CEO of Inred Optics in Northvale. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Mr. Oroho. Hope you're well. Good morning, watching. Amy. Good to see you again. You too. You too. Um, so I have a question that was posed by another. A manufacturer um, that I'm relaying. As the world's medicine chest, what more can New Jersey do to ensure our economy gets its share of revenue from efforts to manage and control diseases? Steve, it's your turn. Okay. I, Amy, thank you. Amy and I worked together up here when Amy was up in uh, you know, Sussex County with a company called Thor Labs, and we're very proud of Thor Labs up here, and uh, they're growing Leaps and bounds. We're very happy, you know, very happy with that that they they stayed here. But um, I think one of the things you take a look at, and to to me, it, it goes kind of to that branding that we had before. Of uh, you got Johnson and Johnson coming out right now with their one shot uh, vaccination, and obviously J and J has a huge huge uh, presence here in New Jersey. Um, those are the things that we got to help to to demonstrate. We got to help to demonstrate that how successful we were in in getting. Um, you know, the manufacturers and with our, you know, PPE and, and, and uh, everything like that. But I do think the idea that, um, you know, Johnson & Johnson coming out with the one shot, we obviously have Moderna. We also have, you know, the Pfizer we shot. Um, a lot of these companies have some, you know, presence here. We have, a, you know, a pretty good sec sector of our biotech industry, our life sciences industry. Those are the kinds of things that we got to keep, we got to keep promoting. And I know Massachusetts um, has kind of the, you know, the right kind of branding that that they're that they are kind of the scientific area of the of the United States. Let's face it, I think New Jersey could easily easily be that as as well with the assets we have, 
and with the companies we have. And obviously, I think with the with the focus that you all have have um, made us, you know, made us more disciplined and made us, you know, really take a look and say, hey, wait, you guys are missing something here, and hopefully, we're getting it now. Um, as Steve said, we're allowing others to paint a picture that they're better than us. And our strength really is our people. We have more scientists, more professors than any other state in the country. And we have the greatest education system in the nation. So I, I think that's critically important. And, you know, an example, Rutgers patented a project, a, 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 a product that you can use in construction materials to capture CO2. You know, we're always talking about, you know, our, our, our environment and that we have a problem with CO2. Well, if they've, cap they've captured in the partner with a New Jersey company, they've partnered with the New Jersey company, they patent it to, to make like hardscape and concrete that's stronger than regular concrete and block because it captured CO2. And even if something happens to the concrete, the CO2 doesn't escape part of the product. Now think about that, that's, that's, national, that's international. So, I mean, that's a product that is going international too. And it's dealing with an issue that we have here in the United States and it was Rutgers. When I, when I toured the facility, I saw this big Rutgers sign and i was like what's that about and they said what well, ruckers is a, is is who patented this so ruckers university think about it. ruckers is the one that came up with this uh, this white swab test you know what i mean they were the first to do that our universities we need to partner more with to ensure that we we do what massachusetts does we we create these industries off of our off of our universities so that we Again, you know, create more business. The fact that, that we've come up with an idea to solve a CO2 problem in construction materials is huge by putting the CO2 right back into the product. So using our universities as, as incubators to create the, the, next, the next generation of industries, that's, that's pretty important. And, you know, that's what Massachusetts did. They took MIT and they put it on steroids, and that's how you start seeing manufacturing grow around it. We made an investment in 2013 on a higher ed bond act, and we need to make more investments in higher education and in our and at our. We did a we did a vocational bond act that the money's finally starting to come out. That we did a half a billion half a billion dollars to create more spaces. We got 17,000 kids. That want to go to vocational programs to be an iron worker, to be a carpenter, or, or to work in manufacturing, and they can't get in. So we got to make the right investments in the right place, and investing in education, investing in our in our vocational schools. And I don't say institutes of technology; I call them vocational schools because that's what they should be called. So we are making, we are, we've made some investment. We need to make more. There's 43,000 open jobs in manufacturing almost at any one time. I mean, New Jersey, in New Jersey. And we need to fill those jobs with New Jerseyans. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. I don't know if you had a follow up, but if not, we couldn't. No, just a comment that the, the rebranding thing really resonates. There's so much going on. Um, yeah, that would be an interesting um, adventure. I think it's a great idea between the pharma and the optics and photonics that's happening in New Jersey uh, and just general manufacturing. That would be, uh, yeah, the New York State recently has done quite a bit there with their uh, initiatives to, to help the Rust Belt towns. Um, but yeah, that's a compelling idea. I'd love to see it. Thank you, Amy. Uh, is uh, Frank Panico on, who's president of Alloy Gas Products from Kenilworth? And, Our yeah. next question. Good morning, Hi. all. Hi, Frank. My question is, uh, how will President Biden's Buy American Executive Order become actual resources for our company here in New Jersey? And when would we expect to see those resources? Well, I, I think a Buy American effort um, should not, I can't imagine that will get partisan down there. 
You know, like, you know, everything seems like it's hyper partisan in D.C. Um, and, and sometimes things should be partisan because people have real beliefs. But I would think that uh, President Biden's push for Buy American products, I would think will be successful, to be honest with you. And I think they'll put resources behind it. You know, sometimes you have to put a few dollars of seed money in to make things happen. You know, you gotta you gotta plant the seeds to make the things grow. So again, I I think that uh, it's a good approach. It's a good bipartisan approach too, because we gotta get these men and women in Washington to start working together. You know, you know, Steve and I, Steve and I, as you can see, we're good friends. We're different in our beliefs. I mean, Steve's conservative, and I'm a moderate. I would say. But we look for things that we can agree on to get things done. In Washington, they just look to disagree so they can't agree. So I'm hoping with what President Biden is doing on this issue, that it will bring people together so that they can demonstrate that, yes, they can do some things to start to move the ball. You know, elections, we shouldn't have to fight four years without getting anything done. The focus should be let's get everything we can get done. We'll all take credit for it and move forward. I agree. And just in, in New Jersey, just real quick, Frank, and uh, as a demonstrator, hopefully the same in the rest of the United States, a bill that uh, Senator Greenstein and I had, had sponsored and our, our assembly colleagues passed unanimously in both with respect to uh, the amount of uh, per, uh, personal protection equipment uh, stockpile for New Jersey and made in the United States. And it received 100% yes votes in both the assembly and, and the Senate, um, and it, as I said before, it's now sitting in the Assembly because we made some uh, changes in, in, in the Senate, uh, sitting there for a concurrence, and I'm sure it's going to get um, you know the same kind of support before. So hopefully that's the same kind of thing that we'll see for, uh, for Buy America as well. Thank we've, you. We've been from every packaging label invoice that we have, it says made in America by U.S. citizens with pride and accountability. Twenty-five percent of what we do is exported. Um, as a foundry, I'm a, a target industry in a target state, so no one has to tell me we're we're here since 1958. I'm here for 44 years, so no one has to tell me how difficult it is to uh, compete and compete in New Jersey. But we've been doing it successfully, and I'm looking forward to see whatever incentives come our way. We have had help before uh, when the world asked us or told us that your own quality management systems were inferior to those uh, by the British invasion. I wrote an article for Foundry Management and Technology saying that it wasn't necessary. However, uh, we did get help from the state for training and becoming ISO uh, certified, and we appreciate that. Uh, it isn't resellable. Specifically, we have one customer that asks us for our ISO certification, and none of the European or Asian customers ask for it. So some of this stuff has to be more specifically targeted. Um, I appreciate your time, and um, I look forward to working with the New Jersey Manufacturing Extension Program. I want to add one thing to that, too. I'd like to add one thing. You know, I've been working on legislation that would require a study. You know, a lot of times uh, we say it's cheaper to buy overseas, but it really isn't if you put into the loss of tax dollars, the loss of, you know, dollars that are, are, are being put in this country or the, or the state, you know, it's not cheaper. It looks cheaper, but, you know, then you have people that rely on government services because they don't have jobs. You know, the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, when they when they redid it, I'm an iron worker, I know I know a lot about this. The the steel was made in China. Golden Gate Bridge. We have manufacturing. What they told us, well, there's not enough steel manufacturers in this country. Guess what? There is. There there isn't. You know why there isn't? Because everyone went overseas. You know, this country's greatness was witnessed in World War II. You know, we outmanufactured everybody. That's how we got to where we are today. So, you know, we should be doing it if, like an economic study when you're looking to go overseas for a product. And once you put all the numbers in, it's going to be cheaper to do it in this, in this country. 
Thank and you the other thing, just you. just real quick to add to that, we now know it's 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 not only it's a national security issue. We 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 know that. We all know. We also know it's a it's a health, you know, it's it, it's a health issue in the fact that making sure that when things like happened to the past year, that we're able to do these things. And one thing that business looked at all the time was a thing called economic value added, and that's the thing that we have to really take a look at because, as the Senate President said, it takes in consideration all aspects of where that value is coming from. And I think that's important. Thank you. Well, we, I'm sorry, Senator President. We only no, have no, about- no, That's something me and Steve will be working on. Great. Uh, our last question, and again, we only have about four minutes left in this session, comes from Casey Munch, who's president of GEMCO in Middlesex. Casey? Hi, good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me here. Mike. Good morning. Good morning. My question is about the competitiveness of New Jersey. What can New Jersey do to be more competitive um, and ensure that we stay competitive with neighboring states like Pennsylvania and New York? I, I'll take that real quick uh, in case. Thank you very much. But I, I think one of the things, actually, my district borders New York and Pennsylvania. So um, and I think it's uh, critically important. But some of the things we were talking about before, and I think it's, it's not any, we have to stay, you know, it's time and discipline that we need to have. And we have the, uh, the tools that are there right now. We have the Path to Progress report that's out there that'll show, help us to reduce the, you know, the total cost of government. It's something that Senator Sweeney and I have been after for a long time. We have the uh, issue of the, you know, the Government um, Efficiency and Regulatory Commission thing that got passed in the Senate. We have the, a bill S1 uh, for shared services. So all these things that are pushing to make New Jersey uh, more competitive. And I think one of the things we have to add to that somehow is also the idea of showing New Jersey's value and brand. Um, and I think that that's really important because I think most people have the wrong perception of New Jersey. It, listen, it's difficult. We're never going to be the low cost state. But as I said before, we've got to be the high value state. And I think we have all the tools in place um, with the path to progress, with with S1, with the um, that gear commission, um, and quite frankly, I, I do. And the one other big issue that we can do, and I, we don't have enough time to talk about it, but this other, the resources of this issue of New York versus New Jersey in the taxing issue, where our New Jersey residents would pay less tax, and that money would come to New Jersey's treasury, and therefore be able to help our property tax situation and whatnot. But that's for another day. And for me, it's 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 us. It's about us. You know, I, my home county <clears throat> does more shared services than any county in the state. And we would give the towns the shared service. We had a growing economy, so we would give the towns the shared services where they wouldn't pay for it anymore. We would lift it up. And when we did police dispatch, it took us 10 years to get all 24 towns to come in. When we did countywide ambulance, we're on 11 years, and I got 22 of the 24 in. What's wrong here is we want a more affordable New Jersey, but we're not willing to change. It's okay for someone else to regionalize a school. That's a great idea, but I like my school. It's okay to merge police departments in the neighboring towns, but not my town because I like my police department. We need New Jerseyans, honestly, to start – looking at government differently and you know we're we're an expensive state because we like this we like it the way it is we're home rule you know i mean it's it's to me i don't care what police officer comes and helps me as long as they're as they're a trained police officer you know it, you know it shouldn't matter you know who what where as long as the product that i'm receiving is of high quality we're paying probably three, four times as much as we should be paying to run government. In fact, I remember Steve telling us uh, government is 25% of the gross domestic product in New Jersey. Got a Think great about memory. that. Yeah, I'm a, I should have been a bookie. I'm good with numbers, <laughs> bad with names. But, but the point is, until we're willing to change, and believe me, it's not easy. I, I did a lot of it down here, and you meet with resistance, but our ambulance program, I'm going to give you an example. Our ambulance program, uh, and, and waiting for an ambulance, pretty important thing when you're on the other end of it. We had 846 calls go unanswered one time in one year. 
That means it took 15 minutes to get an ambulance. So we decided we're gonna do countywide ambulance. The ambulance squads were driving their ambulances around the courthouse in protest, right? And long story short, we create a countywide ambulance system, the only one in the state. We went from 15 minute response times to under six minutes. I have half the ambulances, half that we had before. You know, ambulances are expensive. Mm -hmm. And the facilities to house them are expensive. So until we, as a as as a community, as communities decide we're going to do differently, Gloucester County has 300,000 people. We have twice the fire equipment as the city of Philadelphia. Think about that. I hate parades because when I go to parades, I count the fire equipment, and it and it just drives me crazy. Because it's a million here, it's a million there. It's the point is. We, we have to realize if we want a more affordable New Jersey, we have to accept that maybe another town's going to pick up our trash or the county's going to run ambulance service. We have to we have to embrace change because we all hate the cost of it, but we don't want to give it up. So until we do that, as Steve said, we're value added. We got the best schools in the country. That's why people are here, but we're the worst place to retire. And that's not what we should be doing. We should want to keep our capital here. Thank, thank you. you thank you, Casey. And uh, again, thank you, Senate President Sweeney, Steve Oroho. How about a virtual round of applause for thank everybody? You, everybody? Thanks, everyone. And stay, stay tuned because uh, you go up to the top of your screen and you'll see agenda. We have about a dozen legislators that are going to join you. And please ask questions. And I'll leave everybody with this stat. Uh, and, and credit goes to the Senate President and Senator Oroho. But just to appreciate what they do down in Trenton for us. There's only 121 of them, right, including the governor, that get things done out of a state of 9 million. And in the two-year legislative cycle, you probably introduce no fewer than 10,000 bills, which maybe 500 become law. So I know John Kennedy is big on this, and I know a lot of our members are too, but get involved, stay involved, make your voices heard. So the next session, again, it's the final session. Go up to the top of your screen, click Agenda, and you'll see joint broadcast at 9 a.m. and have fun. Thank you, Senators. Thank you. Bye-bye. Seeing everyone start pouring in here. This is the final portion of today's State of the State event. Um, New Jersey manufacturers, legislators, decision makers are all coming together. And this is what we need to do in order to progress manufacturing forward here in New Jersey. We need to keep manufacturing a part of the conversation. Your attendance, the speaker's engagement, the legislator's involvement, it's all critically important to the future of New Jersey. We have a lot of questions to get through today, so we're probably not going to get them, get through them all. But in April and June, we're having part two and part three of the State of the State event. The conversation is going to continue. So please keep a lookout for those invitations because this conversation needs to keep in New Jersey's, stay under New Jersey's radar. These legislators are manufacturing allies. They wanted to join the conversation today. They wanted to hear from small business owners, New Jersey uh, business leaders, so they can make real positive impact on the New Jersey economy. I don't wanna waste any more time. Let's jump right into it. And the first question is from the president of General A&E, John from Hackensack. Uh, the question is directed at Assemblywoman Spate and Commissioner Asaro Angelo. John, please introduce yourself and uh, take it away. Okay. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, my name is John Baker, President of General a &E. We do aerospace electronics, um, metal fabrication work here in the Hackensack. My question is, how can New Jersey companies make sure that the educational institutions we have are training workers for the types of jobs that employers are finding it difficult to fill many of them creating opportunities for pathways to careers in underserved communities, which in Northeastern New Jersey, we, we rely on. So feel free to take it away. So should I just jump right in or? Sure, answer? that works perfect. Okay, um, thank you so much for that question. Um, 
one of the things I believe, I believe that companies can forge relationships with public officials, especially in their neighborhoods and their school districts to help create like a more uh, direct connection between um, between the school districts and also with their public officials and their legislators so that these companies uh, can understand the areas that they're trying to um, pitch to the people in the community to help with those jobs. And also when it comes to the underserved communities, as you know, I'm in the 29th legislative district and um, a community like mine, a lot of our young people, they don't have that access and oftentimes they don't know. And oftentimes young people and underserved people in our, our community, and I have, I'm gonna just let you know, I have four teenagers and my adult teenagers. And oftentimes we have to tell them what to do and give them direction. Um, we can begin by bringing these opportunities to their attention so they can understand the kind of knowledge and skills and training that they should seek um, through their education, starting at as young as middle school, things like career days or information sessions and things like that. And also throughout high school, um, we don't bring these opportunities, you know, um, go into our school districts or talk into our legis our public officials in our districts and our legislators to merge that collaboration so that people in our community and our education uh, educational institutions will know. So that's what, thank you. Okay, thank you for your answer. Hey, hey John, I think that's a great question. And I, I give such kudos to someone with Spike because I think she hit the, the main answer right on the head uh, is that don't be afraid to get involved yourself. Reach out to your school districts, uh, reach out to your community college, your county college. Uh, you know, from day one of the Murphy administration, we were working hand in hand with community colleges, with employers. Uh, but employers don't know what they don't know. And as much as we can get out there, whether it be through our industry partnerships or other work we're doing through our state employment training uh, committee, uh, in the end, it's about the manufacturer taking that step. And we can provide all the forms we want, whether it be NJMEP or others. Uh, and I got to say, from day one, and even during this past year, uh, where our department has been focused mainly on, mainly on unemployment, when I hear from employers, it's still about where can I find talent? Where can I find skilled workers who are trained with what we need uh, for my business? Uh, I think that when businesses come together, uh, and even though they could be competitors on a day-to-day -day basis for sales or whatever else, uh, that when they're working together with the government institutions about training a similar workforce uh, with skills that go across the board, I think it's one of the things that NJMEP is really to the fore, and I, and I wish that other industries in New Jersey uh, had what NJMEP is, quite frankly, bringing employers together who might be competitors, but talking about, especially when it comes to workforce and skills, uh, NJMEP is a leader on that. Uh, and I really think that you being here today asking that question uh, is a big first step. Uh, but from day one uh, and every day now, we're always working with our schools, down the, like someone said, down middle schools, but clearly with high schools where kids can start working. Uh, I'm a big proponent of kids working when they're in high school. Uh, I had multiple jobs in high school, and I think that leads to a career. Uh, and here in our department, where we both do the working papers on the worker protection side, and then workforce development, uh, we're looking at new ways to sort of mine that data. So we're talking to these kids in high school who have a job about what, what the next step should be for them, whether it be college, whether it be an apprenticeship, whether it be a different training program. Uh, so I think getting them while they're in high school, and I give a shout out to our education department. We have the, you know ranked the best schools in the country. Uh, so we have a huge pool of talent there uh, for companies like yours and others. Uh, but I, I really appreciate you asking the question. I think someone was right. Take that step yourself and be out there finding who's doing this training in your area. And we're happy to help out with that, obviously, at the Department of Labor. So, John, we actually have uh, Assemblywoman uh, DeCrose that wants to weigh in as well. Good morning, Hello. everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, what I would uh, like to add to the conversation of the commissioner and the Assemblywoman is. Um, I had uh, put together, and it did uh, reach committee in 2020, but of course the pandemic has slowed everything down. But A1431 brings together um, the uh, schools, um, the vocational schools, the county colleges, the Department of Education, um, the manufacturing industry together um, to work um, to train individuals to be ready for the workforce. Um, in the county of Mars here, uh, the County College of Mars has just uh, finalized and opened in the end of 2020 a workforce development 
a freestanding building. And um, it's something that I'm very proud of that uh, we work together uh, with the vocational school and the County College of Mars and the high schools. And um, what we found in um, our discussions was that a lot of the manufacturing industries require um, certifications, but now also require accreditation. So um, Mars County does have uh, what we call the Center for Workforce Development, and it works with the manufacturing companies um, in our area. Now, District 26 that I represent has um, over 650 uh, manufacturing companies. So, you know, I know it's key to my district uh, to make sure that we are providing the industry with trained individuals that can fit the jobs that they have to fill. Um, that's part of the problem. Uh, they're not coming out of school. Not everybody is for college, but they're not coming out of school trained for the manufacturing jobs that we have. And um, so I think working together and working with the county colleges, the vocational schools, the Department of Education, and the manufacturing industry as um, we move along. And I know that Senator Greenstein is very um, uh, has been working with me on this bill. And, and as we move forward, we need to open up the dialogue or conversation so that we are bringing individuals out to fill the positions that um, are available. And, and one more thing that we um, found in all of this was as they're being trained in the workforce development um, uh, training that um, they would also be trained for other positions. So if they're on a waiting list to go into a certain industry and that industry doesn't have an open position, we want it so that an individual can go into another industry to uh, work until they can get where they want to go so that we're constantly trying to fill those vacant positions for manufacturing. So and, and Senator, I can see she's going to answer. Yeah, she, she uh, asked and I'm glad well. she's, she's very, uh, yes. she Senator knows. Greenstein. So thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. I'm Linda Greenstein. So I can't see any of you, but I'm glad you're here. Uh, I just want to very briefly say that under a manufacturing incentive program, the um, Economic Development Authority, or EDA, will award $1,000 per qualifying full-time employee at a qualified facility in which the taxpayer has established an apprenticeship or pre-apprenticeship program with a technical school or county college located within the state. So that's a program that uh, if anybody wants information, get in touch with any of us and we'll, we'll try to get you information. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. And thank you, John. As you can see, that conversation, that topic is, is one that really hits home. You're not alone there. And, and as you can see as well, we have a great team working to push this forward. So thank you, everyone. Uh, that was the first question. We're going to move right over to uh, question two. Um, this is Murata Controls from Montville. Uh, the question is directed at Senator, uh, I mean, Assemblywoman uh, Wimberly and Director Willoughby. Uh, please. Pat, introduce yourself and take it away. Uh, thank you, Michael. Good morning. Uh, Patrick Murata from Murata Controls. We're an aerospace and defense uh, design, engineering, and manufacturer right here in uh, Montville, New Jersey. Uh, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to, to join us this morning. Uh, just your presence here uh, goes a long way to, to reassuring uh, the state's commitment to, to manufacturing. Um, one of the things I'd like to touch on this morning is uh, relates to cybersecurity. Companies like mine and many others, in fact, anyone who ventures on the internet is, um, is potential and, and more and more likely to receive some form of, of threat or a cyber attack. Um, and I'd like to understand from you what the state of New Jersey is doing to uh, help combat and prevent and protect uh, the, the people of New Jersey and the manufacturers of New Jersey um, uh, for si in the areas of cybersecurity. It, it affects business, commerce, safety, and, and now even education in such a tremendous way. So Director Willoughby, you want to take that away first? Absolutely. Thank you very much for that question. And it's really a pleasure to be here with everyone today. I'm so glad so many of you have decided to participate because this is an excellent way for us all to communicate about how important manufacturing is to the state of New Jersey. Uh, so I think that it's very important for 
uh, you to understand that the New Jersey Department of Homeland Security uh, is very active in making sure that they have the information to share with businesses about all the cyber uh, uh, concerns that there are out there, as well as having uh, a newsletter that goes out uh, and as well as being willing to conduct um, a, a uh, investigation for companies. And so connecting you with the New Jersey Homeland Security a Department would be one way that the Office of Business Action can help you. Um, so we certainly would look forward to working with Marotta Controls. But uh, since I know you have uh, pieces of your company on the moon, um, you, I'm sure, are very knowledgeable about uh, cybersecurity. But for all of the manufacturers who are not, um, our Department of Homeland Security is an excellent resource, and we'd be happy to connect them with that department. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Director. Um, actually, uh, we have Senator Greenstein that's also been weighing in on this question as well. Please, Senator. I'll try not to weigh in on every question, but there's a couple <laughs> that, that I'd like to. Um, this issue of, well, I'm sorry about that. Am I on? You're all good. Well, you can hear me. Okay. The issue of cybersecurity is something that we have to take a close look at in the public and private sector. And as uh, Melanie said, uh, our Department of Homeland Security, I'm sure, is, is very on top of it. As many of you probably read in the newspaper just a week ago, a utility, a municipal utility in Florida was hacked and the intruder changed levels of chemicals in the town's drinking water that if it had not been caught would have seriously harmed residents. Events like these are happening more and more in, at every level. I sponsored a bill um, originally with the Senate president and now with uh, Assemblyman Singleton that would require water utilities in the state to develop their own cybersecurity plans. It has since passed the Senate and is now hopefully going through the assembly. Uh, but this of course is not just an issue facing water utilities. I've been working with our Office of Legislative Services to draft a bill package uh, in this area and we're hoping to have hearings in the Law and Public Safety Committee of which I'm chair uh, on the topic of cybersecurity. So um, I look forward to working on this very important issue. Wonderful. Unfortunately, it looks like we were disconnected from Assembly uh, Assemblyman Wimberly, but uh, I do want to uh, mention, Patrick, that the advocacy and everyone that's asking questions today, the advocacy team is going to make sure that we, after this event, we're going to con continue this conversation, connect you and the other manufacturers with the people that they need to speak to. So again, the state of the state, uh, is not just about a one and done event. This is about continuing the conversation in manufacturing throughout New Jersey, throughout the year and beyond. Um, and I do wanna make a correction. The next state of the state is in April and the next one after that is in July. So again, we're covering the year. Um, thank you so much, Patrick. I really appreciate you uh, asking the question and thank you, Director, and thank you, Senator. I really you. appreciate it. Let's jump over to the third question for today. It is um, Mac Products, the president of Mac Products from Kearney, New Jersey. Uh, the question is going to be directed at Senator Bucco and um, Director Willoughby, if you, if you would be uh, available. Thank you so much. And we're going to take it away. Sure. Um, Eddie Ross now, the president of Mac Products. We are a diversified manufacturer of electrical, electrical equipment uh, in South Kearney. Thanks, Michael. Um, and thanks, everybody, for uh, taking the time today. This has been a really great uh, introduction to everyone in the uh, a lot of thought-provoking conversations. Um, this is one way for uh, folks to be able to interact with their legislators and ask the questions that are, are on their mind and, and, and get responses uh, from those that are setting policy and directing the state. So, so, um, so I, it's my honor to be here and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, Ed, thank you for that, for that question. I, it's, a, it's a great one. And um, there's some good news here. Uh, the New Jersey is poised to see one of the uh, biggest increases um, in transportation spending in recent years. Uh, the annual appropriation this year is up about $2.6 billion. It's probably the highest uh, one year uh, total increase since probably around 2016. Uh, some of those projects that we're going to see uh, go forward. You've heard about them. The Portal North Bridge uh, project, $770 million uh, phase 
one of the gateway program, uh, which will continue, which is critical uh, to moving goods and services uh, around the state and, and around uh, around the country. So, um, so that's that's a big uh, project. The gateway project itself is about twenty five billion dollars. The Walter Rand Transportation Center is another two hundred and fifty million dollars in Camden, um, and uh, Newark Penn Station another one hundred and ninety million dollars in renovation and upgrades. So, um, and then that doesn't include many of the roads and bridge projects that the Transportation Trust Fund is uh, is scheduled to uh, to fund and move forward. So, I think we're going to see a lot of work in this area. I think it's going to help the manufacturing community uh, by opening up uh, these modes of transportation so that uh, folks can get their uh, their goods out and around and, and delivered to their customers all over. Uh, the state and, and and on route around the country. Uh, if I can just add that uh, Senator has really covered all of the projects um, that New Jersey is committed to, but I'd also like to just add that um, the Biden administration is also committed uh, to infrastructure projects as well, and finally has committed money to projects that have been very, very important to New Jersey. Uh, and uh, I know that um, Secretary Buttigieg has been very clear about uh, funding many of the projects that we have uh, here in New Jersey. So I think that we are going to see a benefit on uh, from both the federal and the state government commitments. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that information. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate that because, um, again, infrastructure is a critical part of how manufacturers can move product, build product, be a part of the community and, and, and the economy. So uh, critical question. And I believe that we have um, Senator uh, Pinaccio that would like to weigh in on this as well. The camera is black, so I'm going to leave it up on um, you, Edward. But Senator, please take it away. Well, I have no idea why the camera is black. I have that effect of people, I guess. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't think I can contribute any more uh, than what has already been added to, but uh, just on a local level, I know we're in discussions with uh, the Morris County Community College. We're hoping that as this um, as the process in Washington uh, it sees itself through and that there are additional monies that are coming into the state, that some of those monies can be used for infrastructure in places like the Morris County Community College. So we're, we're looking at that. We have uh, commitments actually uh, from the state to also look at that. So uh, as you know, we're flush in money, taxpayer money, uh, because of the borrowing and because of the, uh, the projections uh, didn't turn out as onerous as they did. So the governor this year is proposing a budget that is 30 percent higher than the one that he came in on. So uh, we're hoping that within those budget dollars that there are dollars uh, for infrastructure projects and to put people to work and to get the state moving forward. Wonderful. Oh, more things. Yes, um, right. Which is uh, that one of the concerns we hear from employers all the time is not only about the ensuring that the roads are are uh, in good condition, but also in ensuring that uh, the uh, employees are able to get to work. Um, and so we at the Business Action Center have been looking at ways of trying to to build up the transportation infrastructure uh, for those employees who don't have cars. Uh, and looking at not only um, uh, adding to the uh, the buses and vans, but to ensure that employees can get to work. So I think that's another important aspect of, of the infrastructure that I just wanted to ensure uh, that um, Ed was aware of. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so we're actually going to skip the next question and I'm gonna see if uh, Lisa Montebello is available. Hi. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. This question is actually going to be directed to uh, Senator Gopal and Assemblywoman DeCrose. Good morning. All right. Oh, where did you go, Lisa? Let's get you back up here. I believe she may have been disconnected. So I'm actually going to just jump in and ask this question on behalf of uh, Lisa from uh, Event Hor uh, Employment Horizons, right by us, actually, right in Cedar Knolls. So the question is, what strides are taking place to advocate for an effective plan to reopen a larger percentage of all businesses? Now, this impacts manufacturing as well, because many of our customers are other businesses. So uh, what, what strides is New Jersey taking? 
differently. Oh, I'm sorry, I jumped in on your question, Lisa. <laughs> I didn't Can know if it was yourself? me or you guys. Hi. <laughs> you asked it well. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. All right. Um, Senator, uh, would you like to jump in? Yeah, sure. Good, good morning, and, and uh, sorry for being a little late, and hope everyone's doing well. Um, S3093 is a, a bill sponsored by the Senate President and myself, which establishes a county-based mitigation plan to allow businesses to operate during the pandemic. Um, it it uh, passed the Senate, and it's up for an assembly's vote this Monday. This is a, an important bill. One of the, the challenges I think a lot of businesses had during this pandemic is they didn't have proper time to really plan. Um, you know, I think a lot of reasonable people could have understood if, uh, if, if uh, they needed to shut down or they needed to go backwards because cases dramatically increase at a certain point. The challenge we've had the last six months and, and the greatest criticism I've had is that there were no benchmarks or timelines um, on, on mm -hmm. where we were going to go. And, and if you're a business owner, that's extremely hard, extremely frustrating. Um, we can put public health and safety first. Uh, um, but as we should, but we also need to plan uh, and we should know, hey, if our cases and our hospitalizations and our COVID rates are at this number on April 1st, this is where we're going to be. If they're at May 1st, this is where we're going to be. And that lack of planning uh, it made it hard. Many other states mm -hmm. already do this. Um, so New Jersey would be joining uh, and this, I think, will will make it better. A regional reopening uh, approach is uh, is also based on federal guidance that suggests that states tailor their reopenings criteria due to local circumstances. And the state as a whole may be a long way from fully reopening, you know, that, that's why we should embrace a county-based regional approach rather than a one-size-fits-all, um, you know, if there's a hot spot. Uh, if, for example, the data shows that Cumberland County has low levels of COVID activity, I'd, I'd hate to see mom and pop shops, they're suffering under continued restrictions because Bergen County has an outbreak. Uh, so that that's one of the main things that uh, that really need to be done as we move move towards a reopening for the future. Thank you, Assemblywoman. You want to continue? Thank you. Sure. Uh, the senator did touch on um, a lot, but look, we've all learned a lot through this pandemic. Um, I had many many uh, businesses that I had worked with uh, here in Mars County. Um, when you take a look at the numbers in Mars County and you take a look at Hudson County, Bergen County, Middlesex County, uh, Monmouth County, uh, the numbers were very different. It was always um, my feeling that it should be based on, even if it went countywide and looked at um, as to the scientific uh, tech part of it, but the numbers part of it. So um, I think going forward, the state has to have a plan that will enable um, the state to allow sections of the state open um, and and be working. Um, I had felt from the beginning, um, the hot spots had to be dealt with different than the other areas of the states that were not. And that um, it should open up at a certain percentage and 10% um, say every week um, or every two weeks, take a look. If the numbers were stable, then you open up 10% more until we could get all the way back to full operation. I think that many businesses were held back that could have mm -hmm. operated. And I think that we as legislators and the state um, administration um, and all the departments involved um, understand this. And I think going forward, we have to have a solid plan as to reopening and you know one size doesn't fit all and we have to remember that we cannot expect um areas that do not have say they did not have a large outbreak to be shut down as the hot spots so i think we've all learned from this and um i think working together we will come up with something that's going um to protect us going forward um, and if we don't, shame on us, but I believe we've all learned a lesson and we've heard enough businesses cry. I've had many here in my district that have gone out of business and yeah. I have heard people cry on yeah. the phone to me. So um, we, we need to work harder and we need to come up with a better plan. And, um, you know, as, as the old saying goes, if you have a, if a family and, and one child is bad, you don't punish them all. So um, I think we have to be a little bit smarter we have to work a little bit harder and we have to have uh, um, an open mind as to what our businesses are telling us and the manufacturing companies are saying so that we can allow them uh, to, um, you know, continue 
um, operating and not just shut down as what happened, unfortunately. I mean, some industries were hurt a lot more than yep. others, but um, I think we can do working together in New Jersey a better plan going forward. God forbid, hopefully we don't have to. Thank you, Sally Woman. Absolutely. And actually, Senator Buca wants to jump in on this, and then uh, Director Willoughby. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, in addition to monitoring uh, the COVID spread, I think it's important that um, the governor's office look at adding manufacturers into the essential worker class in order to get the vaccination. Um, you know, in my opinion, and I've advocated this with the governor's office, that uh, the manufacturing sector should have been included in the phase 1A uh, rollout of the vaccination. You know, we have manufacturers here in the state, I've got one in my district that is manufacturing um, uh, products for vaccine distribution, as well as um, COVID testing products and vaccine products. And, you know, the owner of that company and I had a long conversation. I went up, I toured the plant, I saw the machines that they were producing. And um, he's concerned that if one of his employees comes down with COVID, he could end up having to shut the entire plant down. Um, and that'll have a major impact on the supply chain. So um, we need to think about not only looking at this at a regional approach, but also getting the folks that are doing these important jobs vaccinated so that the industry can remain up and running and we don't have segments of these plants being shut down. Uh, I think that's critically important that uh, in order to keep the spread and to keep uh, at, in check and to keep these, these manufacturing plants open. They've come up with great technology in order to um, contact trace throughout their plants, but um, it's time. The more folks we get vaccinated, uh, the quicker we can get back to normal. And I think the manufacturing industry should be an essential part uh, in that process. Thank you so much for that, Senator. And actually, I, you, you make a great point, the contact tracing in the facilities. I just want to direct the manufacturers that are on the call today that Mike Seitel, who's actually from Norwell, uh, is going to be uh, asking a question today. He actually gave NJMEP a great link for some contact tracing for your facility. You can check that out on njmep.org on the COVID awareness page. So uh, please, if, if you're interested in lear learning a little bit more on how you can contact trace within your facility, uh, that's a great resource. Thank you so much for that, Senator. And uh, Director, you're up next. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to point out to all the manufacturers participating today that while we are working out the processes for reopening, for vaccination, that there are services and resources that are available uh, to manufacturers and to all businesses uh, that are being provided by your state government uh, to ensure that you have all the answers uh, that you need about um, what the processes are, as well as services and benefits. And that is through the New Jersey Business Action Center, which um, I manage, uh, in which we have a live chat feature uh, at business.nj.gov. Um, and that's where we answer all your questions, as well as going to our help line, which is 1-800-JERSEY-7. And we have answered over 70,000 calls and chats from businesses and manufacturers who have all said, I need help. Uh, how, what can you do for me? Um, and so that's the service that's been provided and we work closely with the NJMEP as well uh, to help manufacturers in everything that they've needed from PPE uh, to expansion for some of them because they needed to do that uh, in, because they needed to expand for, for COVID reasons. Uh, and so I just wanted everyone to know that in addition to the hard work of the legislators in ensuring that, that lots of the processes are streamlined, that there, is, there are services available to you uh, through government. Mm. Thank you so much for adding that, Director. Lisa, you have any questions, follow-up questions? You know, I just want to thank you all. It's um, We've been through a really rough year. Uh, I could say that for every manufacturer. Um, it's important that we don't go back, but that we move forward. And thank you for, for weighing in on, uh, you know, what you all think is best for all of us here in Jersey. So. That's it. <laughs> We can't hear you. <laughs> Classic, right? Uh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> so the, we're going to go circle back to Gary Fales from City Theatrical. Uh, he has a question for Assemblywoman Dunn and Assemblyman Johnson. 
Um, please, Gary, introduce yourself and your company and, and take it away. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Gary Fales, founder and president of City Theatrical. We're a manufacturer of lighting accessories located in Karlstadt. Um, we make lighting accessories for the entertainment world and uh, they're used all over the world. We, we export all around the world, all over the US, any place uh, live entertainment is done, plus movies, TV, Broadway, uh, really everywhere. Um, I thank everybody who's here to hear the manufacturers speak. Uh, really great to, that you're listening. And I thank N NJMEP for the part they played in this, which is always unbelievably helpful to all manufacturers. We appreciate everything that, that, you, that you do for us. So twice today already, there have been questions about PPE and or, or comments about PPE, both from Senator Sweeney and, and Senator Greenstein. So I'd just like to ask specifically, will the state of New Jersey provide any incentives or assistance for New Jersey-based companies that make PPE for our local essential businesses and residents? Critical question. Uh, uh, please take it away. Hi, is it just me? It's <laughs> just you right now. Yeah, John's having some issues. <laughs> okay. Uh, good morning, and thank you so much for, for this opportunity. Um, this is a real exercise in adapting. Um, and from a Luddite like myself, truly, to get into this green room. Uh, so I feel like I've grown already in the first <laughs> hour of the day. <laughs> and um, Gary, I just want to say uh, thank you for for all your perseverance. Uh, I have a brother-in-law that works in the Broadway field. And, um, you know, it, the, the family has had to really pitch in. This la it's, it's scary. Uh, we're not sure when they're going to return. We know that the arts is really most the last the, the last uh, sector to come back uh, and fully recover from from this epi this pandemic, which and it'll be years from now. So um, and as a, a theater goer, um, it's been um, it's really been heartbreaking. So uh, we have some legislation uh, offered for to, to create incentives. Uh, one which I think fits nicely dovetails with I, I think might be my subsequent question about um, you know American made products. Um, and New Jersey made products. So encouraging that manufacturing of the PPE uh, in New Jersey. Uh, again, you know, there, so there's many vehicles, but we've got to get it to the next level, right? And, and build some support for that and get it actually passed out of these chambers and onto the governor's desk. Uh, so I welcome everyone's input on that. You know, we, we um, need to do it together, but um, that is definitely something that I think we also saw there's some like some tax relief uh, for the purchasing of PPE as well as the the manufacturing in New Jersey. Does that answer Wonder. your question? Do we, I think it was a. Did you have a twofold question? Um, only that I was looking for some specifics about incentives or assistance for New Jersey companies that make PPP, PPE for uh, for essential businesses or residents. So it would be that that tax relief. So which I know has not, you know, it hasn't passed. So. We need to continue to push for that. And, and actually, uh, Senator Greens, uh, Greenstein wants to weigh in on this as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in this new, very large omnibus bill, the New Jersey Recovery Act of 2020, there are incentives for companies to locate in New Jersey and a lot of sections that have to do with PPE and, and help for manufacturers. Section 91 of the bill would establish the in-state preference for the procurement of PPE. If there is not in-state responsible or advantageous bidder submitting a bid, then the contract would be awarded to the out-of-state bidder that would be most advantageous, looking at price and other factors. PPE would include coveralls, face shields, gloves, gowns, masks, respirators, and other equipment to protect the wearer from the spread of uh, the disease. Another section on PPE manufacturing, which is sections 106 and 107 of that bill, um, provides a corporation business tax credit and a gross income tax credit for taxpayers making investments and creating or retaining jobs in the manufacturing of PPE in a qualified facility in the state. The credits would be temporary. They'd be allowed for uh, periods ending in uh, 2020, 21, 22 for the corporation business tax and taxable years 2021, 20, 22 
for the um, gross income tax credit. The maximum credit for an individual taxpayer would be $500,000. The annual program cap would be $10 million. And it would be $10,000 for each full-time employee whose job is related to the manufacturing of PPE. And there, is a, there are $1,000 bonuses per qualifying business. There's also something in that bill, sections 92 through 97, which is called the New Jersey Ignite Act. And the Ignite program would intend to foster early stage innovation of, uh, for businesses. The program would be structured as a public-private partnership through which the Economic Development Authority provides grants to a collaborative workspace. This would include a business less than three years old that operates within a targeted industry with at least one full-time employee but fewer than 10 and has less than $1 million in gross sales over the 12-month period preceding its application for tenancy at the collaborative workspace. And finally, the targeted industries under this section are advanced transportation and logistics, advanced manufacturing, uh, quite a long list. Um, I won't read the whole list, but if anybody would like to know more about it, they can get in touch with any of us. So thank you. Thank you, Senator. And thank you, Assemblywoman. Um, does anyone have any further questions? Uh, Excuse, I see um, Senator Pinaccio as well. Do you have any insight? Really important questions uh, because it goes actually to our national health and our national security, uh, not only with the PPEs as we found out, but with also uh, the medicines and the production of those medicines. Uh, um, as you know, a lot of those medicines are not produced uh, uh, in this country anymore, if any, uh, and going forward that, that could that could really ruin us. So we have to we have to uh, think about getting them back, getting them back produced in this country. And if that requires incentives, then then so be it. Uh, I'll give you a, a brief story. When a practicing dentist retired now, but I, I remember buying uh, gloves. Uh, you know, not big deal gloves, uh, seven eight dollars a box of one hundred. Now, uh, because of maybe a shortage that's existing right now, uh, man made or not, those same boxes of gloves are going for sixty dollars. And not sixty dollars a case. What we used to pay sixty dollars for a box. So um, uh, you know they're going to price themselves out of uh, out of the market. And unfortunately, uh, you know we need these things, especially now with COVID, to make sure that we don't transmit and, and, and communicate that disease from one person to another. So uh, looking into it as far as incentives, as far as uh, quite frankly, the best incentive I can give any manufacturer is to keep what they earn. So to that end, this state still has a lot of work to do. Thank you. Oh, I can't hear you're, you. You're, you're muted, Mike. <laughs> uh, hopefully I get that by the end of the day. Um, <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, everyone. That was a fantastic question and an important one as well. We're going to move right over to question six. Uh, Mind Chasers from Manahawk. All right. Robert, you want to introduce yourself? Loading in now. Are you there? Okay, we're going to just jump over to Mike Seitel while uh, Robert gets the tech issue squared away. So Mike Seitel is from Norwalk, the CEO from Randolph. How are you doing, Mike? Yep, uh, this good. question is directed to Senator Gopal, Assemblywoman DeCroce, and uh, Commissioner Asario, uh, Asaro Angelo, and Director Willoughby, if you're available as well. So Mike, we're, we're, my concern is a lot about the trade, lack of trade skilled workers here. And... I've gone to other states, uh, not that they go and woo me and try to have me move, but I've gone on tours of other states and they advertise to the high schools, get in there, and they got waiting lists out the gazoo now of kids. They've really done a good job down south of getting the kids from the high schools in. We're working with CCM now on their new advanced manufacturing site, helping, we just got a, a student out of there um, and interviewing more, so that's a great step. But what I've seen in the state here, there's not a coordinated effort. It's like I'm calling up high school counselors myself to go talk to kids. And it, we really got to figure out a way to get to the ground floor of the younger kids and the parents to promote 
these good jobs here to get kids going into this. Because um, our workforce and every other manufacturer here, we're we're really dying in terms of, I mean, we probably have one of the younger ones uh, um, just because of all the efforts we've been doing. Um, but it's hard. And I don't see a coordinated effort in the state. I mean, NJMEP just done a great job trying to promote, but we really need to start getting to these high schools or something to start, stop having them get rated by the four years of school, college degrees and all that. So I'm just curious if there's any type of effort going on at the government to try to help us in that regard. Thank you. Senator Gopal, you wanna start? Oh, you're muted. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. You're all set. Mike, that's a great question and one that's been debated uh, for, for years now. Um, you know, we, we started a program in my town in Long Branch with the local IBEW uh, Union Hall to do a program for the high school students uh, because uh, you're right. You can a four year college is not for everyone. And we need to start drilling that message. It's for the individual student. It's not mandated. It's not. Uh, something that's in the best interest of, of everyone and, and folks can have a great career in a, in a trade union or in a manufacturing uh, and have a great life and a great pension. So I think we need to uh, do a lot more. I know we've been doing things here regionally in Monmouth County, but that's a great suggestion. And, and I see the commissioner on and I'm sure he'll he'll weigh in. Um, but we need to look at a statewide approach on on taking that reversal. We've got a lot of work to do. Uh, uh, just psychologically, because we've seen for decades, parents have driven in and, and not at their fault or anyone's fault saying four-year college, four-year college, four-year college. But really, uh, we've seen a lot of folks, especially people like me who get a liberal arts degree and then they're looking for a job after four years. So, um, you know, so especially if you're not a, a, a major uh, specializing in something, um, you got to figure out what you can do. And there's a lot of great opportunities. I'm sure MEP is going to be on the forefront, but I'll, I'll, I'll raise it with all my other colleagues. I know Melanie's been working on it and everybody else, but, but thank you for that question. It's something that we need to think about and be more conscious and do a better job at. Thank you, Senator. Hey, Mike, it's, uh, Commissioner. Commissioner yeah. uh, first of all, uh, thank you for your dedication to the workers in New Jersey. Uh, you know, in, in your question, you asked, uh, you know, the state should be doing more. Like NJMEP is doing, it's one of the very clear NJMEP is doing this a lot because of state funding, uh, whether it be through direct funding to the legislature or more importantly for me, uh, they're one of our best apprenticeship grantees. So a lot of the work that they're doing and other worker training grantees from us, a lot of the work they're doing on that front is because of the state. I want to make just make that clear. Uh, but, you, but you touched on something that is a problem, I think, uh, in New Jersey. Not that I'm going to solve it, maybe some legislators will. We can go to other states, uh, their community college programs, their community college system. Uh, is one unified statewide system and they have county-based uh, school districts uh so it becomes a little bit tougher to bring everybody together uh here in new jersey like, like it is in other states i know that south carolina is sort of seen as a leader in apprenticeship for a long time as far as numbers of programs uh I, th and I think because they are you know their apprenticeship office which will be the uh analogous to ours here is based in their technical school system uh and that and they are sort of in charge of all the Community colleges in the state. Uh, I'm not advocating that here. I'm just saying it, it makes it makes it different. Uh, but somewhere very clear, you know, when I talk to our partners and our grantees and the trade and tech schools, they're also facing have wait lists uh, here in New Jersey. So I think that we are keeping pace as far as getting that supply up for folks. The demand for manufacturing jobs uh, has been clear uh, since day one of this. Uh, since I've been here for th over three years now, one of the few states to have year over year manufacturing growth, uh, thanks to all the hard work of everybody on this call today and the NJMEP. You talk about apprenticeships. Uh, since we took office in January 18, 2018, we've had a 66% growth uh, in apprenticeship programs in the state, 66% growth, uh, which is why I'm thrilled that the governor's budget proposed on Tuesday contains another $12 million uh, to further expand apprenticeship programs. We have more than 1,000 in the state right now, with more than 9,000 active apprentices, uh, and we're working every single day uh, to grow that list, not just through state-funded apprenticeships, by the way, um, which include industrial certified production technicians, advanced manufacturing and biopharma, life sciences, logistics, everything. Those are just the ones that we fund, uh, many through MEP. Uh, but I'm actually more excited about the ones that we don't fund. Uh, think things as diverse as in Senator Gopal's County uh, at the Monmouth County uh, Vocational School District has green, uh, diverse as Greenskeeper and Sports Turf Management Apprenticeship Program, all the way to right nearby here, our office, at uh, the Princeton Plasma Physics Lab, where they have a mechanical te technician apprenticeship. Uh, so I really do think that apprenticeship or all kinds of work-based learnings 
are things that we are supporting as a state government. I'm looking to grow that support with the support of our legislature uh, at all times. Thank you for your question and your education. Thank you, Mike, for your question. Uh, it is uh, so, so very, very, very important uh, to really have a uh, major shift in the way parents look at uh, the education of their children and the jobs that are available to them in the workforce for, for them to focus on. And so to that end, uh, businesses have become much more involved uh, in, as like yours, in trying to build from the ground up, uh, getting the schools uh, to focus on advanced manufacturing programs at the high school level. Um, and I remember the day when actually VOTEC was very much a part of every high school, but then they moved it out of the high schools and they moved it into county VOTEC programs. Um, and fortunately in New Jersey, we have been growing advanced manufacturing programs in many of the county VOTEC schools. And to that end, uh, the Association of County VOTEC High Schools uh, together with the Association of County Colleges is now working very closely together uh, to try to ensure that there are programs in which you can start at high school, in the VOTEC high schools, in a, say, advanced manufacturing, and then move into a county two-year program, a county college two-year program, where you can get credits for what you did in high school. Uh, and so this is one of the ways that you can try to encourage uh, students to go into manufacturing and still perhaps come out with a two-year uh, degree. Uh, so I'm very happy to work with you. Uh, the New Jersey Business Action Center has been working with the uh, VOTEC high schools as well as the county colleges to put together the list of all the programs that exist in the state uh, so that we can connect manufacturers with them. Um, so there are those options in addition to apprenticeships. Um, so the options have grown considerably, uh, but sometimes it's hard to find them. Um, so happy to work with you and all of your uh, colleagues. Thank you so much, Director. Uh, next up, I'm going to bring up uh, Assemblywoman DeCroix. Thank you. Um, I did talk a little bit about this um, previously with the County College of Morris Workforce Development uh, Program, but there is a bill that Senator Greenstein has advanced for us on the Manufacturing Caucus, that's A1431, which provides assistance to manufacturing businesses by having certain state agencies promote economic development and identify credentials needed for careers of modern manufacturing. Basically what this bill does, and it was moved out of committee, it's ready for a vote. It was moved out of committee in 2020. I would say because of the pandemic, um, it has slowed things down, but the bill requires the commissioner of education in consultation with the secretary of higher education and representatives of the manufacturing industry to establish and maintain the state recognized list of industry recognized credentials in the advanced manufacturing field. The list of these credentials will, turn, will in turn assist county vocational school districts, institutions of higher education, and the workforce development system in developing appropriate educational programs to train the personnel necessary to meet an advancing needs of the manufacturing in the state. The bill also requires the Commissioner of Education in consultation with representatives of business and industry to identify courses of study careers in emerging manufacturing industry including careers in industrial marketing, mechanical engineering, computer science, electronics, and megatronics. The bill requires the Secretary of State in consultation with the Commission of Labor and Workforce Development to designate an employee of the Department of State to act as a liaison between the state manufacturing businesses located in the state. The duties of the liaison are to assist manufacturing businesses by advertising manufacturing businesses products or service nationally and internationally through the business action center and in the de in the department of state establishing a business referral service where manufacturing businesses may re be referred to other state federal or private business resource organizations but what this bill is trying to do is to bring all the entities together and provide a list so we know where what positions are needed to be filled to um, enhance and develop and enlarge our manufacturing industry here in New Jersey. So I'm hoping that as we move forward in 2021, that um, this bill will be put up for a vote so that we can accomplish, Mike, exactly what you are saying. And that is to um, you know, have a list so that we can um, have individuals ready to fill the jobs that you all have in the manufacturing industry that you need taken care of. So. Um, 
that's what I have to offer on the issue. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to jump over to Assemblywoman Dunn. And then it's going to go Assemblyman Johnson and then Senator Spade. Thank so, you please, so much. I, I just um, I wanted to say hello to Mike Zytel, uh, manufacturer in my own district 25. And Mike, you must have been reading my mind because when we I I wanted to talk about the unsung heroes uh, in this in response to our pandemic. And it was you that I thought of, um, particularly we know that uh, how difficult it was to get essential workers uh, vaccinated as a, as a priority. Uh, I remember you sharing a story how you know, were having your workers uh, travel by car across the nation to avoid further exposure by airplane. So, um, I, and then there you appeared. <laughs> so I just wanna say Thanks. hello and, and thank you for everything. And, and we gotta, you know, I look forward to continuing to work with you and we've gotta do more to really uh, bring recognition to, to all of those here in our state that are on the front line of responding to this pandemic. Uh, and then just finally, I, I know my colleague, Assemblywoman DeCros mentioned the County College of Morris, which is really a crown jewel up, up here in uh, Morris County, uh, but also for the nation. Uh, they rank 44 out of 1,100 uh, schools in the US in terms of graduates with the highest salary. Uh, they're number one in our state for salary potential. Uh, we're also a leader in the nation on a cybersecurity uh, program. And much of that is to do with, with the apprenticeship partnerships. Uh, so we, we've really got to give that, uh, we've got to you know, give them recognition and, and they should serve as a model uh, to, to expand these programs. And we do have a resolution in the assembly, which I'm a sponsor of, AR211, which uh, encourages more of these partnerships at the high school level, educating students, guidance counselors, which we know guidance counselors have become to be known as personal college shoppers, right? Are they really, you know, giving a student a holistic look at career options and other paths? So I hope that AR211 advances, not only in the assembly, but as well as the Senate, and again, onto the governor's desk, and we can do more uh, for that. So thank you again, and um, I will end here. Thank you, Assemblyman. Assemblyman, take it away. Oh, I believe you are muted. Oh, there we go. Your mic is muted right now. There we go. There you go. There we go. Sorry, folks. Good morning, everyone. Still morning? Yes. Good morning, morning everyone. Uh, just uh, I've, I've heard the comments by my colleagues uh, uh, in the legislature. Uh, I just want to uh, add, be a little more specific by by uh, by by ensuring that we are ready for this new industry, this new industry coming into New Jersey called offshore wind. There'll be a lot of manufacturing jobs down there, a lot of uh, skilled labor jobs to be had down there. And are we ready to uh, fill these positions? Are we are we speaking to uh, Orstat and other uh, contractors to ensure that the skill sets they need to uh, get this uh, new industry off off and running, so to speak, uh, uh, so they can uh, accomplish their mission of providing energy to the uh, to the state of New Jersey? So I'm being uh, that's actually a question that I've been uh, trying to ensure that there's an answer for prior to um, uh, the uh, it becoming a uh, a, a stressful a, a, a moment of stress, so to speak. So uh, I, I believe that our community colleges and our Votex uh, hopefully are in communication and uh, can fill these needs, the, the, these skill sets that are needed to get this, uh, to make this uh, operation a success, this uh, offshore wind industry a success in New Jersey. So uh, I'll close with that. I, I know I uh, went over different bills, my colleagues, I won't repeat that. Uh, we in the legislature are supportive as best we can. I know uh, New Jersey BAC uh, and uh, the Department of Labor and also EPA are providing funding uh, and, and the legislature and executive branch. We're all working together in this. So uh, I'll close with that and um, listen to everyone thank else. You so, thank, thank you so much, Assembly. All right, um, next up and uh, the final portion of today's event, uh, we're gonna close out with Senator Spade, please. You're all set, ready to go. Uh, Senator. I'm sorry. Assemblywoman speak. <laughs> My apologies. Um, I died prior um, 
but when it comes to uh, the collaborations, and especially, like I said pro earlier, uh, within our school districts are very, very important. Um, in my district growing up, you know, we didn't know all the leaders in the sector. A lot of our children, we still don't know about these uh, uh, manufacturing businesses as of now. And that, and coming from a parent perspective, um, you know, I have three adult sons and I have I'd love to know about other opportunities that our children can take. And as you know, um, high schools have the college career businesses also include partnership with the districts are very vital and very important in uh, the district like my so you know it's not that um a district like mine would not want to take advantage of that you know these opportunities are out there Thank you so much, Assemblywoman Spate. <laughs> okay, so this actually concludes the first State of State event of the year. Please keep an eye out for additional invitations for the upcoming events in April and July. All are welcome, and we will be inviting more legislators, more manufacturers, and continuing this conversation. So please, if you attended today, there's still value in attending April and July's event. Those that submitted a question that we weren't able to get to, we will be contacting you to participate in the next event. And those that ask the question, please keep a lookout for NJMEP communications because we're gonna be getting in touch with you and our advocacy team to continue this conversation throughout the year. Manufacturing has a special place in my heart. It put, three, put me through school, it put food on my table, and it opened my eyes to the over 11,000 manufacturers that call New Jersey their home. I've been lucky enough to tour these facilities, learn about the people, connect with legislators that are on our team and I appreciate that and I appreciate this industry. You are all an essential part of this our economy and our nation's supply chain. Without you, there's no telling how much damage COVID would have really caused in New Jersey. Check out the partner booths after this event. You can go back to uh, home and then check out all the uh, different uh, partners that we have, learn more about NJMEP and what we can provide. Uh, thank you all for joining us today, the legislators, the heads of vital government organizations, the industry professionals, and of course, the New Jersey manufacturers who continue to help us move forward. See you all in April for State of the State Part Two. Thank you. Well, welcome back everybody. I, I hope this was uh, informative for you. Uh, there certainly were a lot of speakers giving us uh, lots of great information uh, and giving a good in insight into what's happening in manufacturing here in New Jersey. Uh, and like I said at the beginning of the show, uh, this should be a format that other states use to be informative to the uh, working class, the business owners, and so on. Uh, so that being said, uh, Tim? It was, a, it was a terrific event. It has been every year. And for those of you who are watching, you may have come to it on our website. You may have found us on iHeartRadio, uh, C-Suite TV. Um, visit us at jacketmediaco.com is another way to get to it. And we post this up on the internet. So you can listen to it with any of your favorite podcast listening platforms. Thanks for tuning in today to Manufacturing Talk Radio and the New Jersey State of the State Address.